Hello everybody, my name is Leo Brady. I am here, I am with TheMovieGuy.com and I am here with Lila Neugebauer, the director of Causeway. Thank you so much for being with me here today, Lila. Thanks for being with me. Yeah, this is fantastic. Um, congratulations about having the film here at the Chicago International Film Festival. That's obviously a big moment. Um, and we know, you know, I hope most people know that you come from a theater background. Uh, but my question for you is what sort of, you know, growing up, you obviously knew about theater, learned about theater, but what about cinema as itself? Was cinema also something that you grew up and learned as well because that's sort of how you even began to love theater or is it the other way around? Um, I have always been a great lover of movies yes. and also plays. Yeah. I went to... My directing origin story begins at this idiosyncratic public high school called Hunter that I went to in New York. Yeah. And um, for reasons that are utterly mysterious to me, like many young people, I auditioned for the school play. Um, <laughs> and um, it was a school where the students could direct the plays. So I was sort of one of those bossy kids who wanted to run whatever club I was in. Yeah. And because you could direct the plays, I thought, oh, I guess I, maybe I'll direct one of these things. So I directed for the first time when I was 17, and that was definitely an aha moment for me, yeah. a kind of revelatory moment about myself <laughs> um, and what it felt like to be myself in that role. Yeah. Um, I did not then study theater or film. I do not have formal training in any of my professions. Wow. But I then, um, uh, you know, have spent most of the last 15 years, yes, as a theater director. Yeah. And always hoped that I might find my way into the movies, but I'm not really someone who's um, had much of a plan. Yeah. Like a lot of freelancers, I think I was very much just living my life one project at a time, keeping my head down, very consumed with what I was doing. And then very fortuitously, um, a little bit of TV started falling into my lap, and then someone gave me the screenplay for this film. Yeah. Well, and, and, and also, too, I mean, you've worked with, you know, uh, people, you know, you've worked with Mike Nichols, or at least his works, and, and uh, Kenneth Lonergan, things of that nature. Uh, did you, you know, you're, when you were, like, saying to yourself, all right, I'm going to make this a movie, I've got this fantastic screenplay, I've got something that I can turn into a movie, uh, were you sort of saying to yourself, yeah, I, I can do this, or were you, I mean, let's talk about the jitters, right? I mean, when before the curtain goes up at, at, for a play, you're probably, you know, obviously nervous. What, what kind of nerves did you have before you started production on this? Uh, and then did those nerves disappear by the end of the production? In retrospect, I wonder if I'm almost lucky how little I knew. <laughs> I probably didn't know enough to know how terrified I potentially should be <laughs> yeah. about the endeavor of feature filmmaking. <laughs> right. But I would say that also from the outset, I had the um, remarkable privilege of working with an astonishing group of veterans on this film. I mean, yeah. I can speak separately about the actual military veterans that I spoke to. In this case, I mean veterans of the filmmaking world. Right. So I was able to work with a true living legend, Jack Fisk, as my production designer, and I really feel like my collaboration with Jack was my um, film school. Yeah. He taught me so much about what kind of filmmaker I want to be, frankly, about what kind of person I want to be. Um, I also worked with a remarkable DP named Diego Garcia. Mm -hmm. And I had in my two lead actors, um, two people who know their way so intimately around a set. And I mean, Jen's been working on sets since she was a kid. Right. Um, Brian also has a tremendous body of work behind him. And two people who also were so deeply connected to the characters they were playing that very fortuitously, I would say, the process, though there were meaningful challenges, which I suspect befall even the most experienced filmmakers, we all have our challenges. Right. I would say I was in tremendously good company um, in terms of the, the team I had with me to attempt to traverse said obstacles and setbacks. Yeah, well, and, and you know, it, it may be an obvious sort of question, you probably answered it a whole bunch, but bringing 
Jennifer Lawrence and Brian Tyree Henry uh, uh, onto this, you know, onto this film, getting them to play these two roles. How did you go about getting them involved? And uh, I know it's a little bit of a two-part question, but how would you say the relationship was from when you started to where you are today to mm -hmm. now that it's finally up on the screen with those with those two actors specifically? Yeah. Um, so, part one, yeah. how it came together with them. Mm -hmm. About six weeks after I read this film's original screenplay and had attached myself to it, I got a call saying that Jen had read the script and, like me, had a very strong immediate reaction to it. Yeah. And I was asked, would I like to have dinner with her? I said, yes, I would like to have dinner with Jennifer Lawrence about potentially working on this film with her. Right. Where do I go? Yeah. Um, so, and about a week later we had dinner. And um, uh, at the risk of sounding a bit hokey, it felt very kismet. Yeah. Um, I, we connected to each other deeply and easily in significant part, I think, galvanized by our connection to the material. Yeah. But we were also um, very creatively and aesthetically aligned on the project and broadly, I would say. Yeah. And both perceived in that very first encounter what felt like the undeniable basis for a very fruitful creative partnership. Yeah. Um, so that was part one with Jen. Mm -hmm. She signed on that night. Wow. And we began production really only a few months later. Yeah. Um, Brian, I've known since I was 19. Um, I was in college when he was in drama school at the same school. So um, knowing that you are a person who knows the world of theater, I yeah. first saw Brian act in the plays of Lanford Wilson and Terrell McCraney, and then I saw him in Shakespeare in the Park when he first got out of school. Wow. So I have known for a very long time that Brian is an actor of singular depth, magnetism, range, capacity, humanity, as an actor and as a human being. Yeah. I read the script, he was the first person I thought of. I did not want anyone else to play James Oakwin, yeah. and I was floored and thrilled that he wanted to be a part of my first movie. Yeah. Um, in terms of um, the second part of your question, yeah. um, I have had the incredible good fortune to work with two people who I think, at the risk of also sounding hokey, I think are really two of the best of their generation, right. who also happen to be um, really fantastic human beings. Um, we're all friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> Jen is also, as you know, a producer on the film. Right. So our collaboration on it has continued in every phase of the process. Both Jen and Brian were meaningfully involved in the development of the script. Um, because of how intensely they connected to their characters, to the material, to one another, and how invested they were yeah. in honoring um, what they perceived in those characters and what they hoped for yeah. in those characters. So, um, you know, we're on a text chain. Um, <laughs> right, right. Um, we were just all together in Toronto, uh, which was very joyous because it had been a while since we'd all been together. Right. Um, but um, I would say I feel very grateful to have them in my life, in my life. I don't have multiple lives. Maybe I will. Yeah. In my life, um, as as collaborators and as people. Right. Uh, well, and, and so I want to ask you about sort of a little bit of a technical side too. Yeah. I mean, I love the way that you set the stage of every scene I think you give life whether it's a bench that they're sitting on with snow cones or or it's a kiddie pool well you know like is that sort of is that sort of your theater sort of background coming into play where you're like I can take you know a small box put these actors in a space and say go play play with the material work with the characters is that sort of your goal well I'm so glad that that was your experience yeah of um what I would say, per your, your mentioning like a bench, is yeah. that, you know, I mentioned Jack and Diego, and I would reiterate that I think part of what um, aligned the three of us was a shared, um, a shared love for what can present as a deceptively simple frame. Yeah. A deceptively simple frame that when very intentionally composed, can in fact contain an enormous amount of psychological and emotional information. Yeah. Um, so I think that collaboration with both Jack and Diego was hugely instrumental to orchestrating a kind of mise en scene yeah. <laughs> that felt um, sensitively calibrated towards the performances, towards the characterization, so that um, the context never overburdened the substance of the performance, 
but hopefully elevated the performances. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, last question before I let you go. I mean, I know it's it's a very maybe difficult sort of question to answer because this is very um, heavy material, but also you know I just felt very emotional watching it, which I think is a, is a really good part of about, about Causeway. But talk about what you hope sort of this movie, how it can impact just one viewer as they're watching it. I mean, I know it's kind of, you you want the whole world to see it, but it's like I think sort of it's kind of that movie where. If it just impacts one person seeing it, that's that's where you can start, you know, right? I'm very moved by that. Yeah. What you've said. Yeah. Um, part one, I would say, you know, I had the incredible opportunity while making this movie of talking at great length with U.S. Department of Veteran Affairs medical experts in the field of traumatic brain injury, veterans, and U.S. Armed Forces service members. Yeah. So the first thing I would say is that for any veteran or service member, who might choose to watch this film. Yeah. It is certainly above all my great, great hope that they would see even some small kernel of truth reflected back to them. Right. And that that experience of recognition might in some way be useful. Yeah. And more broadly, I would say, um, I hope um, that the film is a reminder that um, recovery of any kind um, is not always linear. Yeah. And that um, the project of trying to heal um, sometimes transpires in what might look like very small steps, <laughs> right. but that those small steps um, can be meaningful. Yeah. All right. Well, Lila Neugebauer, thanks so much for talking with me today. Congratulations, Causeway. It's going to be on Apple TV Plus and in theaters. Thanks. Congrats. Thank you so much. Yeah.